Hello grade 10s, in this video I'm going to go over how to find a missing side, the length of a side, versus finding a missing angle in a right angle triangle. Of course we're going to discuss using trigonometry, but it's very important for you to know the difference between when to find a missing length, when to find a missing angle, and the different methods. Let's jump right in. If I have to give you these two situations that you see on the screen, okay, situation number one, how do I find that missing side? Situation number two, how do I find that missing angle? I really hope that you can give me an answer for both of these right now. Even if you're brand new to trigonometry, you don't know what it is, you've never done it before, you're in grade 10 basically. How do you find the missing side? Let's go over it. Let's look at the first triangle, triangle ABC on the top. If I had to give you the triangle right now and I had to say, please find me the length of the missing side for triangle ABC. In other words, find me the length of AC. How will we do that? Well, we mentioned it's a right angle triangle. Yes, we have the length of the other two sides. Great. So I hope that you're all screaming at me that we can use Pythagoras because we can. If we have a right angle triangle and two out of the three sides, we can immediately use Pythagoras. And we want you to immediately use Pythagoras if you're able to use Pythagoras. So there's a little bit of something you need to look out for and you're like, okay, cool, ma'am. We know Pythagoras. We know how to do it. Let's just go over how to do Pythagoras. In this case, we're looking for the hypotenuse. So we go AC squared, everything in Pythagoras, you need to square it, all the, si the lengths of the sides. We go four squared plus three squared. If you're looking for the hypotenuse, if you're looking for the long side, you must plus. If you're looking for one of the short sides, you must minus. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to square root four squared, which is 16, plus three squared, which is nine. You're basically square rooting 25, which gets you five centimeters or five units. And you need to write a reason for me, Pythagoras. Easy stuff. Again, you might be thinking, why is ma'am saying this to me? We're trying to do trigonometry here. I will get there. Just follow me. Let's look at situation number two. How do we find the missing angle in this situation over here? Think about it using your grade nine knowledge of geometry, or if you're in grade 10, your grade 10 knowledge of geometry, how do you find a missing angle in a triangle? It's a right angle triangle, which means that we know that this is 30 degrees over here, this one over here is 90 degrees, and the sum of angles within a triangle equals to 180. So if x, if this is 90, this is 30, together that's 120, that means that x must be 60. Again, if you're not sure how I get there, I go 180 minus 90 minus 30. Or you could write it as x plus 30 plus 90. The sum of those must equal 180 because we're doing sum of angles in a triangle. Or you could remember the reason as angle sum triangle. Basically, this is the reason where the sum of the angles in a triangle equals 180. So you can see x plus 30 plus 90 equals 180. That's it. X is 60. Again, ma'am, where's the trigonometry coming into play here? Let's look. What if I had to give you these scenarios over here? So starting on the right-hand side, if I had to ask you to find the missing side, can I use Pythagoras? No, I only know one of the sides. I only know the seven. Over here, I'm asking you to find the missing angle. I've called the missing angle X. Can you use sum of angles in a triangle equal to 180? No, because although I know one of the angles, although I know that this is 90, I don't know what this angle is. So I can't use that angle sum triangle. So how do I do it? Can't use sum of angles in a triangle. Can't use Pythagoras. We're going to have to use trigonometry. Now, if you missed my previous video on the basic trig ratios, you're going to want to go watch that video first, but you need to remind yourself of so Katoa, so Katoa, and that's just to remember the different trig ratios. Sin is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. You need to go over that first in order to carry on with this video. So how do I do this? Again, we're going to have to use trigonometry. I actually want to start on the right hand side over here with finding the missing side. We're going to use trigonometry, use our trig ratio. So we're looking for x. What we do is the following. Look at what we have. Look at what we're looking for. So we have this 40 degree angle over here. 
we also have this side over here that we're looking for and we have this side over here that we're given now because i'm working with the 40 degrees that i was given ask yourself the following question what is the seven units relative to the 40 degrees and what is the x relative to the 40 degrees what i mean by that is the following look it's a right angle triangle let's label it just to make it easier a b c the seven what is the seven in that right angle triangle if you've watched the previous video you should all be shouting at the screen right now that the seven is the hypotenuse how do we know that the seven is opposite the 90 degrees okay always 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 opposite the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse but now looking at the 40 i'm looking for x is x opposite the 40 or is x adjacent to the 40 i hope it's clear that x is opposite the 40 so if i want to use 40 as a angle which i do want to use 40 as an angle in order to help me find x i need to use something that has opposite and hypotenuse in it so which of the three trig ratios has opposite and hypotenuse in it i hope you're saying sin or sine that has opposite and hypotenuse in it so what we need to do is the following i want you to do this so you're always going to write your trig ratio that you decide on so because i'm looking for opposite 40 and i have the hypotenuse we're going to use sin so you go sin 40 remember this it's always trig ratio and then the angle so what i mean is it's either sin cos or tan so the the one of the three trig things that you've learned sin cos or tan and directly after that directly after sin comes the angle directly after cos comes an angle it's always like that it's always either sin cos or tan in the angle so sin and then the angle this is the angle 40 now remember what is sin equal to again sin of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse the angle that i'm using is 40 so what is opposite the 40 x what is the hypotenuse of this triangle seven right we're on track here we're almost getting our x now how do you solve for x like a normal equation we're looking for x on this side we are dividing by seven if I take the 7 over the equal sign, we're going to do inverse operations. It's going to become multiply by 7. The opposite of divide by 7 is multiply by 7. So it's 7 sin 40 equals x. And therefore, x is equal to, you grab your calculator, grab your calculator, type in 7 sin 40, just like that on your calculator. 7 sin 40, press equals, and I get 4,495. 4,4995. We in maths generally round off to two decimal places. So it is going to be 4,5, 4,50. So this is how you find the missing length of a of one of the sides in a right angle triangle without using Pythagoras. If Pythagoras is not available as an option, we can use one of our trig ratios. Now let's look at how we will find a missing angle. We do a similar thing. You will see that behind me over here, I've pressed, I, I've written shift sin. I'll explain what that means now. But if we're finding a missing angle, you follow a very, very similar method. So let's take a look at that. Looking at the triangle that I have, I'm looking for the angle, which is X. So we're looking for this angle X. I now need to decide if I'm going to use sin, cos, or tan. And the one that we choose depends on the other sides that are given to us. So we're looking for an angle. The trig ratio that we use depends on the sides that we give you. So I'm giving you a three and I'm giving you a four. Look at the triangle. Am I giving you the hypotenuse? I hope you're saying, no, ma'am, you didn't give us the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree. Look opposite the 90 degree. I don't know what that is. I didn't give it to you. So I'm not giving you the hypotenuse. That means that we can't use sin or cos because sin is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. I can't use either of those. I'm going to have to use tan. Let's see if using tan makes sense. Tan of the angle. Remember, it's always your, your trig, either sin, cos, or tan, and then directly after that, the angle. So tan of the angle, the angle is x. Tan is opposite over adjacent. 
Okay, so what is opposite x? Look at x. Opposite x is 3. What is adjacent to x or next to x? 4. So tan of x is equal to 3 over 4. We have the opposite. We have the adjacent. That's why it makes sense to use tan. But now we're trying to find the angle. Now, the reason I wrote shift sin over here, I just used sin or sine as an example. If you're working with cos, it'll be shift cos. If you're working with tan, which we are, it'll be shift tan. Basically, what we do in order to find the angle, and you always do this if you're looking for the angle. Remember, the angle is the thing that comes right after sin, cos, or tan. So right after the, the, those, one of those three words, that thing is the angle. If I'm looking for the angle, you take your calculator, you press the shift button. Generally, on the scientific calculators that you guys use, the shift button is this one over here. So you press shift, okay? Then because we're working with tan, you press tan. Your calculator is going to look like that. It's going to say tan to the power of minus one. We want it to look like that. So you press shift, tan, and then you type in whatever is on the side of the equation. So in this case, it's three over four. So shift tan three over four equals, my calculator tells me that x is equal to 36, 869 dot 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 remember we round off to two decimal places so it's 36 comma 87 degrees we're looking for an angle so our unit is degrees angles are measured in degrees make sure that your calculator is in degree mode there should be a little d on the top of your calculator right that is the difference between finding a missing side and finding a missing angle in short in other videos in this playlist, I go over finding missing sides in more detail. We practice more examples. And in a separate video, I go over finding missing angles. Just remember, if you're finding an angle, you must press shift. If you're finding an angle, a missing angle, you have to press shift. I hope to see you in another trick video very, very soon. Bye, everybody.